You never know what you might come across when you go out walking on the beach. You'll find plenty of pebbles and sand, but if you're lucky, you might come across an unusual relic washed up by the sea, or a work of art that somebody's left there for you to admire. From historical wonders to strange feats of design and engineering, we've packed together a wide range of incredible beach finds for you in this video. Of all the things that can go missing, jewelry is often the most upsetting thing to lose. Jewelry can be valuable, but it can also have sentimental value to its owner. That's why we're glad to be able to start this video with a story that has a happy ending. Amateur metal detectorist Jerry Pope was out combing a beat in Orlando, Florida in late 2009 when he came across a ring that had clearly spent a long time in the water. It was coated in green residue and it even attracted a tiny chunk of white coral. Jerry took it home and washed it and found that it was engraved with the initials KEB and further markings that identified it as coming from the Auburndale High School of Central Florida's class of 1970. It was somebody's class ring, and Jerry was determined to reunite it with its owner if it was possible to do so. Fortunately, it was. The ring's owner was one Kenneth Boards who had lost it on the beach with his high school sweetheart on his prom night almost 50 years earlier. Jerry was delighted to be able to give Kenneth his keepsake back. Our next beach discovery comes from California, on the other side of the United States of America. In March 2019, beachgoers were surprised and alarmed to find the carcass of this gigantic fish waiting for them when they headed down to Santa Barbara to spend a day in the sun. The seven-foot-long fish perplexed people at first, but experts eventually identified it as a hoodwinker sunfish, a species that had never previously been seen in North America. They were at a loss to explain how it ended up washed up on a beach such a long way from the waters that it usually calls home. There are five distinct species of this kind of fish, but they usually prefer to swim around tropical and subtropical waters in temperate climates. One possibility is that the fish passed away out at sea and was brought to California by the tide, although it might also have been deposited there by a storm. This particular species was only discovered in 2017, so it provided American marine scientists with a rare opportunity to study it up close. Heading over to the other side of the world, a fossil hunter named Philip Mullally made the discovery of a lifetime when he was combing Australia's Janjuk Beach on the Great Australian Road. It's an enormous shark tooth, and it comes from a species that's been extinct for millions of years. The prehistoric mega shark that owned this tooth would have been more than double the size of a great white shark and would have terrified every other living creature in the waters of its time. Philip found the tooth embedded into the side of a boulder, and when he pulled it out, he found that it was almost perfectly preserved and nearly three inches long. The precise species of shark that this comes from has the catchy name of Great Jagged Narrowtooth Shark. They lived in the oceans around Australia around 25 million years ago and would have survived by eating small whales and penguins. A full-sized adult would be 30 feet long. We're glad they're not around today. We wouldn't want to mess with a shark that was so big that it could eat whales. The first thing the man who found this next beach discovery did after coming across his unexpected find was run away from it. And we don't blame him. It's a missile and he had no idea whether it was live or not, or was about to explode. He didn't have to worry. It's a Maroc 105, manufactured by the Italian Leonardo company and generally only used in weapons testing. To be more specific, it's a target drone. Apparently, this particular target drone suffered a serious malfunction and then got very lost. It was found on a remote Scottish island in the Outer Hebrides. The 13-foot-long missile wasn't a threat to anybody, and it was safely recovered and removed from the beach not long after its discovery was reported in January 2012. Nobody knows how the missile came to be so far from home. Leonardo says that they never had any reports of one going missing, and nobody has owned up to losing it. It may have gone into the sea closer to Italy and came out north of Scotland thanks to the movement of the tides. In late 2018, a Vietnamese fisherman thought he'd caught a huge, impressive fish in his nets. Only when he hauled his potential catch of the day onto his boat did he realize he'd actually caught something much less edible and far more dangerous. 
a 22-foot-long Chinese torpedo. Based on its design, it appears that the weapon was fired from a submarine. We have no idea what its target was when it was fired or why it missed. We're just glad that it didn't explode when it was dragged onto his boat. The fisherman named Tran Min Thanh said he caught the missile four miles away from the coast of Phu Yen in south-central Vietnam. Once he brought it ashore, the Vietnamese Navy was called to dispose of it safely. When they did, they found that it had an orange band around its shell and was therefore likely to have been used as a training round. It's probably a YU-6 torpedo loosely based on the American MK-48 and introduced to service in 2005. It wasn't equipped with a warhead, so it posed very little threat. You don't have to be a human to make a sensational beach discovery. A curious dog with a good sense of smell can do it for you if he knows where to look. In January 2020, John Gopsel was out walking his dogs, Sam and Poppy, on a beach in Somerset, England, when the dogs came across an enormous fossil and then drew his attention to it. He realized that the five and a half foot long fossil was probably significant, so he put pictures of it online and waited for someone to come to him with information. It didn't take long. Southwest Heritage Trust identified it as a 190 million year old ichthyosaur and cut it out of the rock to take it away for preservation. It's thought that it might even be a new species of ichthyosaur, and if so, John is hoping that he'll be allowed to have the discovery named after his dogs. Humans usually get that honor if they make new fossil discoveries, so we don't see why the tradition can't be extended to dogs too. There was a lot of cleaning up to do after the American Civil War ended, and not everything got safely tidied away. If it had been, there's no way that Civil War era cannonballs would have turned up on a beach in South Carolina in September 2019. It's thought that the cannonballs had been buried under the sand and mud for more than 150 years before their cover was blown by Hurricane Dorian, allowing them to be discovered by Aaron Latin. The military was called in because of Aaron's belief that they might be unexploded bombs, but an IED team determined that they were actually cannonballs, one an 8-inch shell and the other a 3-inch shell, and they didn't pose any clear and present danger. The area of Folly Island, close to Charleston, was occupied by Union troops in 1863 and was extensively built upon with military fortifications. It's possible that the cannonballs are relics of the battle to regain control of Fort Sumter. They're more than a little bit rusty, but they'll probably find a home in a military museum. Returning to California, you have to know what you're looking for if you go in search of Victoria's Beach Pirate Tower. It's hidden in plain sight, but it's in a secluded location that's easy to miss if you don't know it's there. The tower was built directly into the rocky cliff face of the beach in 1926 and connected to an estate on the clifftops. It's an impressive structure, standing 60 feet tall, but there was a fairly significant error in the tower's design. The exit door is below the waterline and cannot be accessed during high tide. Over the years, it's been encrusted with mud and sand and cannot currently be accessed at all. The pirate name comes from an eccentric former owner of the estate who said to have spent his time dressed up as a pirate. He hid coins between the rocks of the tower for children to find. We don't know whether we should find that charming or a little bit creepy, but it doesn't take anything away from the tower's fairy tale like appearance. If you move along California to Black's Beach, just outside Scripps Coastal Reserve near San Diego, you'll find another strange abandoned structure. This is the beautiful and ornate Mushroom House, and it's a shame that nobody lives in it. Mushroom House is just a nickname. Its real title is Bell's Pavilion, and it was built to order by Dale Nagel in 1968. Nagel's brief, which he got from Sam Bell of Bell's Potato Chips, was to build a home that could resist earthquakes and other natural disasters. Nagel was a big fan of futuristic design, and his dreams of the future informed the strange shape of the home that he built. Many years ago, there was also a tram that could carry people from the house to the roadside, but it's long since disappeared, and the tracks have rusted away. The isolated beach that it stands upon can only be accessed at low tide, which might go some way in explaining why it became abandoned. It's still private property today, so the public isn't allowed to step inside and take a look around. 
In November 2019, an entire beach in Finland became covered in ice eggs thanks to freak weather conditions. Thousands of the egg-shaped structures were formed in a very short space of time on Halitu Island, allowing a unique photo opportunity to Risto Matilla, one of the first people to come across them. Ice eggs are a known phenomenon, but they occur very rarely. They begin with just one small piece of ice, but they're rolled over and over in freezing water by strong winds, picking up more ice and becoming larger as they go. Risto says that an area covering around 100 feet on the beach was covered by the eggs, which immediately began to melt away as soon as weather conditions improved. Some of them were as small as tennis balls, but the larger ones were as large as three feet across. Walking across them must be as close as it comes to the sensation of walking on an alien world as it's possible to find on Earth. If you head out for a walk on any of the beaches of Wales in the United Kingdom, you might come across a work of art by land artist John Foreman. If you're very lucky, the gifted conceptual artist heads out as often as he can to create works of art using the stones and pebbles he finds on his country's beaches. They always surprise and delight the people who come across them by accident. To John, all of this temporary beach installations are a part of a single project, which he calls Sculpt the Words. Typically, he uses swirling patterns, but it's also made rock circles using every different color of stone he can find, resulting in a calming, yet somehow psychedelic appearance. Most of his works of art appear close to his home in Pembrokeshire, an area that's blessed with mile after mile of unspoiled beaches. He knows that his work can't last for long and that the tide will eventually take the stones away and spoil his patterns, but to John, the impermanence of the art is all part of its beauty. Theo Jansen is another artist who likes to work with things he finds on the beach, but his designs are a little more elaborate than John Foreman's. Here's one of his finest pieces, a kinetic sculpture he's named the Strand Beast. The amount of forward planning that must have gone into the creation of the Strand Beast is almost unthinkable. It's actually an analog robot that can walk along the beach when the wind gets behind it. Most of it is made from plastic and wood that he finds on the beach, although he's added some pumps and tubes to ensure that they're able to walk and move without incurring damage from doing so. Theo has designed several generations of Strand Beast, which can be found on beaches all over his home country of the Netherlands. He's been working at his unusual hobby since 1990, and so his designs have become more intricate and impressive as the years have passed. Many replicas of his creations can be bought as 3D printer designs for $100, but it's not the same as seeing them out in their natural environment. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.